everyone, welcome uh, on my true crime channel and today I have a new story for you. If you don't know me, I am B, and today we are going to look at interesting story case and we are going to back a little bit in past because today we're going to look into the Victorian era, so quite a long time ago. Anyway, let's start from the beginning. Today I'm going to talk about Mary Ann Cotton. Mary Ann Cotton was born in 1832, so it's a long, long back. She was born into the small mining family in Durham, England. Her father was a miner and her mother was uh, a miner's wife. Miner's wife a uh, job was cooking, cleaning, take care of the of the house, all the washing, uh, make the home a nice place when husband comes back from work. Just <laughs> pretty much the same like in this time, right? Uh, like women take care of homes and everything. So also the the miner's wife job was bringing up the children and it was childbearing was a major job for miner's wife. So basically when you when you were a woman at the time you did everything at home including giving child Wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> and now it's coming. Families at the time had 8, 10, 12 and also 16 members. And that's crazy. Like, imagine it's you, your wife and 14 kids. That's totally insane. But at the time it wasn't something uncommon. It was it was pretty normal, which uh, shocked me a little bit when I was making this story. Yes, it was not uncommon. And imagine like 16 people, so you, your wife and 14 kids in one small house. That's incredible. Like, it's not like at this time when all kids have their own rooms and everything and no, they almost all live like in one room uh, like a lot of people because people was, were a poor so they could not afford a big house it's crazy I, I don't know, I think even 8 or 10 people it's pretty much for one house yeah, it must be horrible, horrible at the time. Anyway, her dad, uh, Mary Ann's dad, uh, died when she was 10. It was a mining accident, so life was hard for her and the mother. Uh, she had also some siblings, so it was horrible time to live uh, without a husband for the mother. Uh, but she got married again, so everything got a little bit better. Uh, let's move a little bit into the future. Uh, when Mary was 16 she decided to take her first step out from home because she was tired of the life she was living. The towns and villages in Durham in the in the mining, uh, mining areas were mostly dominated by mining a little bit else so there was no other life there and yeah I believe it must be a little bit um, uncomfortable so she was tired and she said okay I need change so she left there wasn't much opportunity for other work the mining was the main job that you could uh, get there she started working then she got to know a middle class life and she immediately knew it's a different life than she used to live before she came to this job and what was the job 
the job was uh, she worked for a culinary manager at Southampton and as I said she saw the life it's totally different there and it wasn't pretty much enjoyable or easy job it was pretty hard and pretty long every day she worked as a domestic servant so at the time it must be really hard work and what what uh, it was interesting for me, like main for this job, what you had to do, it was cleaner, cook, she take care of the house and the kids and she was maker of fires. <laughs> and the, then I was like, yeah, right, they just, they had no heaters like we have now, they just, you know, we're making fires <laughs> but I like the title maker of fires that makes me laugh anyway she worked pretty long as I said she started early in the morning and she ended when the person she worked for for went to bed so it's pretty much a long day and what's interesting, the family she was working for had 12 kids. Oh my god, 12 kids. So you have to take care of all over the house, do the cooking, and cleaning and everything, and take care of 12 kids. I think I could not handle this. Um, because they must be really anyway and this may be this experience with 12 kids uh, may have given her a lifelong dislike of kids which I understand pretty much because it must be hard but no more fun because this is not funny uh, at year 18 uh, 52 when she was 20 she got married with William Mowbray so she escaped a little bit from the hard work but also she had to do there and then work at home because she had to take care of uh, everything William Mowbray had a secure job on the railways so they moved away and that was like escape uh, for Mary because she wanted away. They lived in a railway shanty town, so it wasn't anything fancy. Uh, they lived there for some time and they lost four or five children, which must be horrible. Horrible. So uh, they were far from home, lost four or five children so this they decided to go back where they come from so after a few years Mary William and one surviving child returned back uh, and the mining industry was booming at the time so William got a job down there in the pits and Mary was back in the life she wanted so hardly to escape well she was she was back she wasn't really happy about that she knew how work in mine can be dangerous because her father died there so she quietly encourages William to take out insurance policy and we could say it's nothing unusual, right? When you have a wife and a kids, you want uh, the best for them. If something happened, they wait for it. Then uh, it started. So we are getting into the point of this story. So he made the insurance policy in case something happened to him and boom not long after he is dead 
supposedly, supposedly typhus fever. But of course at the time it wasn't uncommon, it was pretty common. It was a year around 18, uh, close to 1860s, I believe. So, yes. And then she made her first claim from the insurance company. And uh, if you're asking how much she uh, get from the insurance company, it was 35 pounds at the time. Back then, it was about half a year laborers wages. So for her it was pretty, pretty good, right? Like uh, half a year. At the time, she was widow with two daughters, but shortly one children dead. So first husband and not, not long uh, after one of her daughters dead. And she didn't want to take care of the other daughter, so she just bring her to Mary's mother. And she said like, here we go, take care of her, I don't want her, it's too much on me. So she stayed there uh, with her grandmother, Mary was free again. In the, in the 19th century, people get quickly married uh, again after they lost husband or a wife because it was pretty hard to live on your own. So it was pretty common that you lose a wife, but like in a month or maybe less, you have another wife. And maybe she's widow too. Like it was pretty, pretty common that people get quickly together. So, and here it is, another husband and beware. After a year, he died, supposedly cholera. And all this repeat again husband and children and when she uh, married someone new uh, he had children too so she had a stepchildren and also own children so this is repeating again she found a husband then husband died and the kids died all of them and that's horrible also her mother died after Mary visit her because the mother was sick Mary visit her and boom, mother dead. And when I was reading this story and with all the documents, I was like, okay, it was the, the time back in uh, the Victorian's era, but this is weird. So mother died and what's interesting, she took the daughter back with her to bring her home but within two weeks, the daughter died too. And everything is so fast, I can't believe it. What's interesting, at the time, infant mortality was pretty high. From 1,000 uh, children, almost 200 died. So that's pretty, pretty sad. So she was almost invisible there. Children and people were dying even by cold. It wasn't. It was pretty pretty common. Uh, the healthcare as we have now wasn't there back then. So they just died of cold or all this sickness like cholera and typhus fever and everything. She was surrounded by death, like her husbands, her kids his tapkis, her mother, and I found information about also two lovers of her died, and that's crazy. No one was suspicious. Well, I think I would be suspicious. So no one was suspicious except one person. Thank God for it. So except one person, and it was official overseer, assistant of coroner. And he was suspicious because uh, of the number of deaths uh, around Mary and Cotton. Because he was like, this is not normal. She's surrounded by death so much like nobody else. And I'm glad he noticed. 
doctor made uh, some tests on the dead from the uh, Mary uh, family members but he didn't find anything unusual and he even didn't know what to look for but he had samples from the little boy's body and he made tests on these samples and he found something and the something was arsenic and now you maybe realized then uh, they made some tests of other members of the family there uh, who were dead and arsenic was also there I am sure we all know what arsenic is but I have here some notes so arsenic is a poison I think we all know that it's very very toxic at the time arsenic was as common as a bleach it was available and used throughout the house on woodwork uh, to kill vermin sorry vermin <laughs> uh, used in the candles or uh, wallpapers it was many many uses for it it was known arsenic is col colorless tasteless and odorless and it shows itself after death like you would you would even know uh, someone give it to you and you could buy it everywhere in uh, pharmacies and ordinary grocery shops everywhere it was like no problem arsenic is everywhere so symptoms of arsenic poisoning it depends on the method of use if it's done in a big dose at one time or in the small doses for a longer period of time so when it's on the small doses symptoms are it's diarrhea diarrhea crampings pain in stomach and the intestines dizziness vomiting and nausea that's a uh, slow arsenic poisoning and in the big dose it causes damage to essential organs and death she slowly murdered by arsenic up to 21 people husbands kids stepkids her mother and probably two lovers so she put them uh, she put it to them in the soup mostly or food or tea so it's tasteless and odorless so they didn't even know they are poisoning and because it was a lot of sickness around it was it wasn't even like weird uh, they are very sick for a couple of days and then they died I really don't know who can do this she wasn't even like in a bad mood because she murdered someone and the worst is that she slowly was killing the the own kids and the step kids and she watched them die slowly and I was pretty shocked when I was searching information for this for this story it's horrible so in total she had four husbands 12 kids and few stepchildren and she killed them all except one you will get it soon it says about her she was 19th century killing machine also called black widow you maybe heard of her maybe not but um in the documents and in the articles i um i read it was uh that in britain you said mary and cotton or black widow when everyone knows knows about her and also uh, parents was scared their children like be nice or Mary Cotton will come to get you I don't know if it's true or not but if I would be a kid I would be scared <laughs> uh, it's it's horrible it was like everything was repeating she got married and then if the husband lost the job or became ill or she didn't want them anymore she just poisoned them and the children like why the children like she could put them into the orphanage or something like that it's horrible 
I don't understand her acting. Uh, I don't know. So when she, uh, she had no husband anymore, she found a new one and all this happened again. It's horrible. She killed for personal gains and there was money. So she always uh, got a money from the insurance policy. So she was she was okay and she was free. So her like motive for killing was uh, money. And that's horrible. She was arrested and while waiting for the trial it revealed she is pregnant again and that means uh, the trial was delayed uh, because of her pregnancy about six months uh, when she gave uh, birth trial could continue it took one hour uh, for the verdict the verdict was death by hanging well, she didn't deserve anything better, so... At the time, she was 41 years old. And Victorian society didn't like executing women much. It was extremely rare to execute a woman. But it was so rare as a woman a serial killer. So at the time, it wasn't serial killers uh, like all over the world. What we know now. Uh, it was really uncommon, woman and a serial killer. Maybe it was more of them, but people didn't know about them. And I found information. She had the worst hangman in Britain. He was in his 70s, so he was 70, uh, probably between 70 and 80 years old. Very frail and very, very weak. And he had reputation for being extremely cruel uh, for the people who execute. And he, he didn't use to hang them properly. So uh, he was cruel because the people who was uh, supposed to be hanged, they didn't broke uh, the neck. So they would suffocate themselves and not, uh, not they didn't die by broken neck, but they suffocate. I will not talk about here if they deserve it. I don't want to be a negative, but definitely she deserves it. Like, they, she watched died like all the kids and all the husbands, and that's horrible. Like, she was there and they died oh, when she was there and she was watching it. It's horrible. So her neck didn't broke and it took about three minutes till she suffocated. She is buried within uh, Durham prison grounds and that's all. That's all of today's story. It's really shocking that she murdered own kids. I... why? Why the kids? It's, it's always horrible when in the cases are kids. You know, they're innocent and they didn't do anything, so... Horrible! But anyway, I'm glad uh, there was one person who noticed that something's not good here and I'm glad she was punished. She was punished well, she deserves it, by my opinion. Yeah, that's all for today's video. It's pretty... Uh, horrible when I think about all the kids, but... Yeah, we have to move on. So I hope you like this story. Uh, let me know if you already knew Mary and Cotton story. Uh, if you like this channel, please don't forget to like this video, uh, subscribe this channel to help me grow. And uh, that's all. Thank you so much for your patience and for watching this video. I hope it's not going to be so long. And Take care, stay safe, and see you in another True Crime Cakes. Bye.